Um, so yeah, um, thanks Sophia as well for that introduction. Um, I know we jumped ahead with the introductions of the panelists, but we'll just go ahead and jump into this presentation and then we'll get into the panel conversation. Um, so good morning, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this webinar on exploring um, the potential of joint supply planning in West Africa. Um, so my presentation today is gonna cover um, the research project um, concept um, design and ultimately the key findings and observations that we were able to, to see through the different um, discussions that we had. After this panel, after this presentation, we're also going to jump into a panel conversation where you'll hear from regional and national family planning leaders um, in the field on their perspective of um, joint supply planning in the West Africa region. And um, so as it was mentioned again, um, please do share your questions um, using the chat function or the Q&A feature um, throughout the entire presentation and throughout this, the panel sessions, we'll be taking your questions at the end of the, of the, the discussions. So you can go to the next slide. And so before jumping into um, the method and findings, I really wanted to provide you with um, a bit of a background on this research project. So in 2023, um, RHSC commissioned Kimonix to lead a research project in close partnership with themselves, RHSC and with WAHO. Um, the main objective here was to really lay down the groundwork that would help us to better understand the potential of future joint supply planning implementation in the region. Now, before even jumping into joint supply planning, I just wanted to clarify the definition of joint supply planning. Um, so here we're not referring to an activity where countries would come together and plan and develop one joint supply plan um, that covers regional needs and demands. Um, instead, um, the way that we define um, joint supply planning is that it's an activity in which WAHO um, engages and convenes ECOWAS country representatives regularly to share and jointly review um, family planning um, supply plans for regional decision making. Um, so, um, you know, so from, for some time, RHSC has really been, or through the Compass Initiative, um, has been interested in documenting and the viability and processes for joint supply planning in the region um, for contraceptives. And more specifically, they've been interested in understanding the ability of ECOWAS countries and WAHO to collaboratively review um, country supply plans for joint decision making. Um, so to do this, Kimonix um, qualitatively assessed the landscape and engaged in consultative um, discussions with a broad range of stakeholders um, to develop ac an actionable report and that would help us to inform the, our reproductive health community about the different challenges and opportunities and recommendations um, in order for joint supply planning to be um, implemented in the region. Uh, you can go to the next slide. So as a first step, um, Kaman has conducted a desk review um, to inform, direct, and in the research project. And this really helped us to ensure that there are no duplicative um, efforts um, with other initiatives. And the desk review really helped us to inform the different learning questions that we would use for the focus group discussions um, to define and joint supply planning, um, to learn of the need and benefits of the regional approach in West Africa, and also to understand how um, other regional efforts may also provide insights um, in what joint supply planning uh, um, should be considered or what we should consider for joint supply planning. Um, next, um, together um, with WAHO, with RHSC, um, so we designed the, the research project in order to explore the potential um, for joint supply planning in the region. Um, so the design consisted of three phases um, that were implemented um, in each of the ECOWAS countries to collect the information. Um, the phases included an informational call um, with MOH leaders. Um, and also an electronic survey um, to collect more descriptive demographic information about family planning um, with large. And then also um, focus group discussions um, with um, in-country stakeholders. So once um, this was finalized, um, a consultant and I in close collaboration with um, FTO, um, PSM, um, the Kimonic Senegal HSS project office staff, um, conducted 22 um, group discussions in 14 um, countries. And um, to add to that, we also had um, focus group discussions with regional entities and then one um, focus group discussion during the RHSC GMM in 2023. Um, so um, with the consultant, um, then I then conducted a qualitative data analysis um, to inf um, of the information that was collected. 
um, from the 22 different focus group discussions um, to identify different recurring themes um, and findings that we were seeing um, across all of the different group discussions that we had. And you can go to the next slide. So before going through um, the findings, I did want to touch on um, just the focus group discussions, just so um, we see who, who was involved and just the overall objective. So the main goal of the discussions was to assess um, ECOWAS countries' interest in joint supply planning and also the framework um, that would be necessary for its effective implementation. Um, the focus group um, discussions consisted of various um, stakeholders, in-country stakeholders, um, ranging from central government directorates or specialized programs, um, in-country implementing partners, in-country donors offering kind um, donations. Um, and then, as I had mentioned before, there was a separate focus group discussion held for the Regional um, Committee for Visibility and Reproductive Health um, Logistics Data in West Africa. And you can go to the next slide. So now we'll jump into findings and you can go to the next slide again. Um, so um, through the different um, or for the, the 22 different focus group discussions that we had conducted, um, participants generally shared the view that joint supply planning was of good interest. Um, and so here on this slide, um, we were able to identify eight recurring themes um, to support progress towards um, joint supply planning implementation in the future. And so I'll provide a high level overview um, of each of these um, slides um, in the following um, slides that I have to come. And I'm sure that we'll be able to share these slide decks um, with you. And also I think I just saw um, Lucian posted the full report. So you'll be able to have more detailed information um, with regards to each um, theme that was identified. So if you go to the next slide, um, so, here, um, the first theme. So to determine whether joint supply planning could be achievable um, is really essential for us to understand the current technical capabilities um, of ECOWAS countries to develop national supply plans because of their importance um, for enabling joint supply planning implementation. Um, so when we asked um, participants about their technical capabilities um, of supply planning, um, in their countries, they spoke of the existence of consolidated supply plans um, and their country's technical capabilities to use recognized tools um, to adapt to the contextual needs and to produce um, these plans. And so as you can see here um, from a quote from one of the participants, they noted that there are um, strong quantification skills within the technical team contributing to effective supply planning, um, while um, another person remarked um, that the family planning program does a great job to encourage collaboration across public private um, partners and they also play a major role to convene partners together um, where they would not necessarily share um, data if they did not come together to review this data. Um, so taken together um, it was clear um, to us that the countries agreed that while they do have national supply plan um, they do exist um, that family planning programs um, invest um, in strengthening consolidated contraceptive supply plans. There is collaboration um, between a, di a diverse set of stakeholders um, in country um, that have strong te technical capabilities. Um, recognized tools such as the CAT, the quantification analytics tool, um, are used to support um, the supply planning process. Um, and also um, partner coordination is essential for resource mobilization. So while countries um, experience with supply planning has really been focused on the national level, uh, we found that these technical capabilities um, provided the foundation for successful implementation of joint supply planning. You can go to the next slide. And so while ECOWAS countries um, do have um, technical capacity to produce national supply plans, um, they, uh, and they exist, um, you know, there are still um, some challenges that do persist. So even with a high level of national supply planning capabilities, um, many of the participating countries in the focus group discussions um, reported on persistent challenges that impacted the availability of contraceptives. Um, one of the more significant, and there are a range of challenges that were that were shared, but one of the more significant challenges that were reported by participants was related to um, harmonization and standardization of um, supply planning, which contributed to the inadequate availability of um, family planning products in the in the country. 
And as you can see with this quote here, one participant mentioned that in West Africa in general, as we all know, we have a wide range of maturity on supply chain generally and supply planning specifically. And even the definition of supply plan between one country and the next isn't the same. They're not calling the same thing um, a supply plan when they don't have the same data points. They're not using the same methodology. So overall, we found that while challenges do exist, um, joint supply planning um, does offer new opportunities to strengthen the process. Um, for instance, it could help to bring a diverse set of decision makers um, at global, regional, and national level um, together around a common conceptual framework um, for the terminology, the tools, methods, um, for assessing and addressing um, the different challenges. Um, it can also provide a new space um, for countries to discuss practical ways of advocating um, for um, the financing of family planning supplies, um, participating countries that share similar geographical population or other types of characteristics could learn more about other factors that drive them forward. And on this point, last point, I'll just add that we did know that it was still important to understand the, that adaptation was needed and essential. Um, because the national context had to be considered since what functions in one country may not necessarily function in another. And so we can go to the next slide here. So for this third theme, um, so most of the participating countries um, rely on donors, implementing partners to fill um, country supply plan, or supply pipeline and um, provide financial contributions to purchase um, FP supplies. Um, yet all of them, um, all of the countries pointed out that uh, during the discussions that these resources were difficult to mobilize and justify, and it becomes increasingly challenging as the price of contraceptive rises. So one participant noted that there are problems in releasing government funds, um, resulting in the delays of order products, while another participant noted that even though you're done your supply plan, um, this doesn't mean that the gap due to resource, um, the gap due to funding resource limitations. So here, um, thinking through joint supply planning, we thought that this um, really had the potential to offer countries another mechanism for advocacy efforts and to effectively communicate with bilateral, multilateral partners to ensure that funding gaps were filled. And another potential benefit um, of joint supply planning um, when it came to resources was the ability to aggregate demand across country supply plans, which could lead to more effective sourcing, sourcing and procurement um, due to greater economies of scale um, on purchases and, and special rates. And so when looking at the, the next slide, um, so we all know that um, logistics data is essential for improving global health supply chains in general. Um, as it helps to strengthen the quality of the different interventions that are being implemented. And to address data visibility, availability, and quality, we've all seen uh, many um, countries in the West African region and, and others begin to introduce um, ELMIS systems to improve these aspects. Um, but still, um, we need an effective system to better collect um, and analyze quality data to limit those errors. And so um, the quote that is here um, on the slide, I won't read it, it's a, one of the longer quotes, um, but it is just one example of, um, of data quality issues um, that commonly appears. And to this, um, joint supply planning um, can add value um, in this aspect. And so over time, um, jo um, joint supply planning really offers this opportunity to strengthen data quality um, by allowing participating countries to gain a broader um, visibility of the supply planning data in the region, which will help them to identify um, issues such as inconsistencies, inaccuracies, redundancies, and data gaps, um, especially since countries will be able to share tools or techniques to validate data effectively. And on the next slide, um, so when we were doing the desk review, um, so in the literature, we noticed that since about 2005, um, there's been growing interest in, West, in a West Africa regional approach to contraceptive security. Um, the, this sub-regional um, approach to reproductive health commodity security um, presented with many um, advantages, including um, that it would be a, a great um, advocacy vehicle um, at the sub-regional level. Um, to help facilitate a space for countries to compare, inform, and influence um, public health policies. 
Um, but more recently, um, we've seen this type of collaboration through WAHO's Regional Supply Chain Data Visibility Committee. And this regional committee really aims to engage uh, regions, uh, the, the region's countries and, and their partners um, to the van and to ensure that the country's needs are being considered by supply chain actors, both regionally and globally. And um, given uh, the popularity and technical expertise of the regional committee, all focus group discuss um, discussion participant expressed um, the interest in WAHO playing the leading role um, in the future of joint supply planning, which um, with the support from global and regional entities such as RHSC, UNFPA, and USAID. And so one participant noted that the existence of WAHO gives us the um, opportunity to institute a forum um, for joint supply planning that can be used to facilitate the meetings. And so WAHO's regional committee could be this optimal platform for participating countries to convene um, for joint supply planning in the future, and, and countries do welcome this. So when you go to the next slide, um, so here, um, so for joint supply planning to work, um, one of the main things that we uh, all identified uh, with the participants and, and just with our, our, um, our little group that was designing the, the concept, um, it requires secure and a secure and defined approach um, to data sharing. Um, so during the focus group discussions, um, we all we asked all the participants to give their perspectives about any formal or informal barriers to sharing um, and reviewing national family planning supply plans with other countries. And so all the participants saw no immediate obstacles um, to sharing supply plan data um, in with other countries in the region. However, um, in, and that's more like in theory, but then in practice, um, they did um, voice concerns about um, other countries' reluctance um, to share the data, um, the type of data that would be shared, and how the data would be protected and secured, um, and also how other countries would use their data. Um, so before joint supply planning can be launched, it's going to be important to develop and establish clear, clear guidelines, procedures, and even a data sharing agreement um, to ensure um, data security and protection, which will also um, benefit and, and instill some sort of confidence in, in the participating countries. Um, so through the existing tools, um, participants brought up the van. Um, thinking through those um, those existing tools, participants did bring up the van. Um, so all the participating countries are um, already using the van. And so JS, uh, joint supply planning, JSP for short, um, can be um, and should be capitalized um, or sh you know should capitalize the van um, on this existing data sharing platform. And one participant summarized it here. Um, so we are already have supply plans in the van. Um, they're already standardized. Um, they're already mapped and we already have an integration to take them in. Um, we already have new ways of getting the data. We coordinate directly with ministries. And to me, it wouldn't make sense um, to do it on another platform. So when you go to um, the next slide um, here, and so thinking through monitoring and feedback mechanisms and how countries would wanna receive this feedback. Um, so for joint supply planning, it really became um, necessary for the monitoring and feedback mechanisms to exist within uh, the national supply planning processes um, because this would really be crucial to its success. Um, many bilateral and multilateral partnerships already exist and stakeholders are actively working um, with countries to support um, supply planning processes through um, targeted technical guidance. And when thinking of planning, planning, um, supply planning, um, this is mostly done using the van. And so as such, the van really stands out as a potential enabler of future um, monitoring and um, feedback loops. And we think that it can help the joint supply planning process to um, the national procurement processes um, because it has those functionalities to um, allow for multi-stakeholder reviews and feedback, which should be leveraged. And um, regarding the desired uh, monitoring and feedback mechanisms, um, participants suggested 
um, periodic meetings um, in various different formats, um, biannual online meetings and annual in-person meetings um, to review supply plans and also to discuss lessons learned from the Joint Supply Planning Initiative. And lastly, um, so you can go to the next slide. Great, perfect. Um, joint supply planning success depends on strong human resource capacity in participating countries. And so as we noted in theme one, um, there are technical um, capacities that do exist um, uh, with these people being able to use the tools to adapt the plans and, and contextual needs and to produce um, supply plans. Um, and during the focus group discussions, the countries actually commented on the preference to support um, those that are already employed um, and capable of performing the job rather than hiring new staff. Um, but the frequent turnover or staff turnover um, was a concern in many of the countries. And so they suggested um, training staff beyond the family planning program on a recurring basis just to ensure that they had the required supply planning skills and knowledge. Um, participants also voiced um, the need to engage the VAN team um, that is responsible for um, reviewing supply plans at RHSC. Um, so the VAN analysts already have an understanding um, of the technical aspects of supply planning um, and the data items that are being shared. So they would provide even more insights and, and more pointed insights and recommendations to help strengthen the national supply planning processes. And when you go to the next slide here, and so um, here are just a few um, of the, the conclusions and suggestions and recommendations that we were able to pull um, some from the participants themselves and some from what we were able to just look through as we were going through the analysis. Um, but overall, um, the participants shared that joint supply planning um, for contraceptives um, was of good interest and that frameworks um, exist that could be leveraged um, so that joint supply planning could be a success in West Africa. And if you go to the next slide. And so um, I think, again, I mentioned this earlier on in the presentation, um, but so if you wanna learn more about the research project, um, please do read the, the full report, um, which is linked. I think that the link was shared in the chat, we can share it again. Um, and it just really covers the, the research design and the different thematic areas in more detail and rather than this kind of like rapid overview. Um, but please do reach out to us if you have any questions, make sure to put your questions in the chat or in the Q&A and we'll be happy to address those at the end of the panel conversation. And so now um, I know that we've introduced him before, but I'll, I'll hand him back um, the mic. And so I'd like to introduce Josh Kinnan Goldsmith, um, who's going to be your moderator for um, today's panel conversation um, with uh, the, the different um, FP leaders that we have um, on the line. So Josh, um, over to you. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Angela. Um, I will uh, introduce myself quickly. Good morning. Bonjour uh, tout le monde. Uh, my name is Josh Kinnan Goldsmith, uh, and I am the task order director uh, for the USAID-funded Global Health Supply Chain Technical Assistance uh, Francophone Task Order, or FTO project. Um, we will move into our panel. Uh, I did. I do want to thank uh, Angela uh, for all of uh, that, the, the work that has, uh, she has led over the past several months with our counterparts in, uh, in West Africa. Um, thanks also for that really comprehensive overview um, of uh, the, the study uh, and focus groups that were done, which I really, I think, uh, introduced or explored the potential for joint supply planning and um, really brought out the fact that there is uh, is capacity and interest in joint supply planning, uh, starting uh, with contraceptives uh, specifically, um, and especially looking at West Africa, where uh, the van is being used, uh, where we have a strong stakeholder uh, counterpart in, in WAHO that's already doing uh, a lot of coordination and data sharing at a regional level, um, that there is uh, capacity and interest and potential uh, efficiencies uh, if um, if uh, if joint supply planning moves uh, moves forward. So I think the the exercise is really helpful. We're really happy to share uh, some of the findings. Um, and I uh, will go to our panelists. Um, I do want to remind everyone that we do. Uh, I've I've seen already some questions both in the Q and A uh, function uh, as well as in the in the chat. So if you have questions on 
Uh, the report findings, I've already seen a, a couple come come in. Um, please share thoughts, comments, or questions. I'm going to pose uh, several questions to our to our panelists um, who are a, a large uh, part of the of this initial uh, study, uh, and then we'll move into uh, questions uh, from uh, from 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 the audience. So I did uh, I did introduce our, our panelists um, already, um, but just as a reminder, we have Dr. Kletus uh, Adewazin um, from Waho. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Abram uh, Agosu uh, from Togo, uh, as well as uh, Alex uh, pharmacist Alex uh, Oguchoku, uh, who is joining us from uh, from Nigeria. Um, I am going to uh, start uh, with a question. Uh, I'll, I'll, move, I'll switch to, to French uh, for Dr. Cloutus. Uh, based on your perspective, uh, what for this supply chain, how do you see it and how can we use the current uh, regulation in order to use JSP in the ECOWAS region, in order to have a better ch uh, supply chain? supply chain planning in the region and mainly in West Africa and the ECOWAS. Thank you, Josh, for this question. I would like on behalf of the Director General of the West African Organization for Health to thank all those who spent some time in order to participate to this webinar. For those who do not know, the OAS, which is the West African Organization for Health, is an association from the ECOWAS that is in charge of the coordination and the harmonization of health regulation and policies in 15 countries, eight French countries, uh, uh, six French, uh, uh, Spanish, uh, English speaking uh, countries and two uh, Portuguese. We have various projects and one of them is on medicine and this is part of the exchange that we will have um, this afternoon through this webinar. Just to go back to the question of Josh, first of all, I would like to attract your attention on the fact that we discuss here of the joint, uh, the joint, uh, joint provision of the, uh, the medicine, but not the planning. This confusion comes from the joint supply chain. And Angela said it very well in her presentation. So I would like that there will be no confusion in our heads when it comes to the clarification of this concept. We are discussing here, of course, the joint review of the, uh, sub supply, so the supply. It's not about to have a plan for the 15 countries. Each country is going to have its own plan, but we set up a review program together and the objective is to exchange experiences. We have some experiences uh, when it comes to uh, our sub-region. As you should know, the, our organization fund contraceptive products purchased in the 15 countries. But compared to the upper partners, we have the leadership of purchasing those products in the countries. That means countries themselves who are at the head of the purchasing process from the beginning till the end. It is the country that drafts the call to tender, the country that's received the offer, the country analyzed the offer, the country, the country signed the contract with the provider. We only help, uh, help the, uh, the, the provider when the product reach the shops. And based on the exchange we have here, we are hit the joint review of the DAO. That what does it mean? That means that each year we meet all the countries of the ECOWAS around the table and where we assess and we analyze, we review the DAO of each country in front of the other countries. What does this mean? That means we have 10 countries in the room and each country comes with their call to tender to purchase the product that we fund. Take, let's say Benin. Benin, we draft, we review the Benin plan. And in front of everyone, we take the Burkina Faso call to tender and we review it. We take the, take the Ghana and we do the same. And as, uh, until we reach the last country because we and go until Togo because it's per alphabetical 
to, uh, order. So, and the, we took Togo. And Togo is changing the situation. Over time, we are moving into the analysis. Each country will change the situation. And at the end, we are going through files and the country we can see and the countries that bring gives an opportunity to the countries to exchange together to improve their call to tenders so that's what we are doing currently we are doing this experience but i do think that this strategy is the right one it's about sharing experiences it's another to better draft the call to tender and to implement them because if we share experiences uh, the, and the review of documents together the countries will learn from each other and we are going to improve their supply when it comes to planning for these supplies because they hear how it is done in Benin, Togo, Ghana and how those plans are being implemented and we have the means to do it. We have the means to do it because we uh, because we need to, to understand the strategy in place. I will share with you an experience. I hope that I don't speak too fast for the interpreters, but we have other initiatives that are ongoing. And uh, let's say, in uh, and the director is, win, uh, is here with us in this battle, we have uh, the early, uh, early alert uh, system. And this early alert system has uh, all this health uh, director, health uh, healthcare directors like child and mothers, uh, health, and uh, between the directors that we exchange, we have the regional committee. We have a that's a platform in order to reach this uh, integration, uh, uh, and we need to. And what we understood from all these committees is to understand even when we plan the supplies, we uh, we already have this. A, experience in sharing experiences and improving our uh, supply. So I would like to thank the organizers for the opportunity. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Doctor, it's uh, Cletus. Uh, I, I can hear that it is a great experience and how to improve the process within each country. And we are not speaking specifically about a joint uh, planning, but we are talking about a, a process, a joint process, in order to reinforce uh, what is existing in each country. I think I have a question for Dr. Ugasu. Ugasu, who I would like to hear his uh, national perspective because national perspective is very important based on your point of view and after the discussion groups that set in place in Togo, uh, how this uh, joint review is uh, relevant for you today and, uh, and, uh, what, and uh, what will be next uh, when it comes to planning for the ECOWAS countries. Thank you very much, Josh. I think that Dr. Cletus said a lot when it comes uh, while well, providing some response to your question. The joint review of the uh, supply plan allows the country the, to take stock of the situation and also to take stock of the situation in the neighboring countries. And the objective is to allow those countries to be informed about the possibilities to transfer in transfer medicine between countries either to avoid a shortage or to avoid an over storage of those medicine and the objective to strike a, a balance and to have a, ch a supply chain that is reactive, that is have the, that is resilient between the countries. I think that this uh, joint review will represent an opportunity to share in experiences on the various of the various. Uh, uh, various supply chains. So this uh, exchange allow us to have the quantities, the quality of the product, the quantity that been uh, that been uh, used by the US, uh, users, and the coherence between the level of stock, stocks and the planning of the orders. That means that when the data are not updated, 
there may be uh, there may be an overlap or even a misfitting of the information in real time. For me, the impact of this uh, joint review is uh, paramount. It is very important, specifically, specifically because now we have a scarcity of the product of the medicine and each country wants to have an efficient management of those resources. This provides us an opportunity in order to uh, get out of this uh, uh, supply difficulties that we have. And the countries, uh, we work all the 10 countries together. What is good is that when we speak, we take each country individually, it can be a problem. But when we work together, we are able to discuss the difficulties and can we help each other in order to streamline our supply and to make our product available for a good functioning, uh, good functioning of our planning. That's what I can say. Uh, in addition to what Dr. Kletus said before. Thank you very much, Dr. Ugasu. Okay, merci beaucoup, Dr. Uh, Ugasu. Uh, I'll switch um, I'll switch to English. Uh, and um, I have a question now for uh, for Alex. Um, after Dr. Ugasu spoke on why uh, joint supply planning um, is relevant and how it will impact supply planning across ECOWAS. Um, I, I did want to understand from your perspective uh, in, in Nigeria, uh, what about the challenges? Um, which challenges will joint supply planning potentially help uh, to address? And how do you think it might alleviate uh, any bottlenecks in, in supply planning? So thank you and, and welcome, uh, Alex. Okay. Thank you very much for this uh, opportunity to lay my view on this joint supply plan aspect. Um, joint supply plan is actually good. And we know a lot of things that it can help us to alleviate in our country and in West Africa as a whole. Number one is about the funding gap, funding gaps. It could help us to sort out the issues of funding gaps in the sense that when you have a joint supply plan with other countries, when you sit with other countries to look into their joint supply plan, you will be able to know where and where there is gap and from there, you can use it. And even the other uh, uh, partners or the ECOWAS or Wahoo can also use it to advocate for funding. And uh, there should be also a way of synchronizing the way, probably the, how, the best practices on how to uh, move ahead in, in advocate, advocacy which each country will also learn from there to move ahead in your country to ad advocate on how to get more money for your um, for the procurement of the of the commodities, and it's also it can also reduce it can also reduce overall cost of procurement when you actually join supply plan, and also. We can also talk about stock out. Joint supply plan through the van, you'll be able to know where you are having issues. For instance, I, I did not hear uh, Cletus very well because um, I don't understand the um, uh, French, but I know very well that he must have talked about how other countries help other countries in making sure that they live up to their potentials in terms of uh, stock out, having availability of commodities, just like uh, Nigeria, we experienced that through Wahoo, 
And if, if there's no visibility, if there's no visibility in, in data, you may be, not be able to do that. And that takes me to what I, I said about no, not having visibility in other countries' uh, data. And this is what the joint supply plan can also help us to do. With that, each country will know what we are. I think Alex may have, uh, have, have frozen. Uh, Alex, can you hear me? On that, you'll be. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, it just froze for uh, for a moment, but we can uh, hear you once more. Yeah, I think um, uh, go. Yeah, just some uh, so, some cutting off, but um, if your connection permits, Alex, would you like to uh, finish? Just noting that the last uh, last a minute or so, we were not able to to hear of your answer. I um uh, we'll we'll come back to uh to Alex, but I I, I note that we're having some uh, technical difficulties. Um, but thanks to Alex for covering that from um from the the country pers perspective. Um, uh, I uh. Je vais changer un, 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 disruptions. Un, un français. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, Alex, we're having uh, some connection issues. So je... I will go back to Dr. Obusu, who, uh, who is the ambassador to Togo. The question is uh, how, uh, how tools are being useful in order to support the efficient implementation of the joint planning and uh, what are the capacity that are prevailing in uh, ECOWAS. Dr. Augusto, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Josh. Indeed, the van is a tool that is of a paramount importance, specifically for the joint, uh, the joint uh, planning, because it allows us to have a visibility on the level of product storage in the various countries. And it allows us to take decisions in order to have, to take a decision and to launch an urgent order or to negotiate a transfer of a product from a country to another in order to avoid the shortage and maybe to participate in a transfer because we have enough storage in other countries. So the van is in fact is a relevant tool and plays an important role in kind of striking a balance between the various countries. For the review, the review means that there is an analysis that, that is made pertaining to the implementation of a plan this analysis or this assessment is being made based on the ordered quantities, the received quantities, and the used quantities, the remaining quantities, and this allows us to see what are the ongoing orders and what is the visibility. And uh, all that is made through the van. This allows in a certain way to um, this review allows indeed it is an opportunity to share the difficulties of the countries and the approaches in order to find solutions between the countries and it is true that currently the supply plans are not assessed when there is a national review in order to gauge the implementation of this plan. So most of the time we are not able to do this assessment in order to find the difficulties and propose solutions to overcome those challenges. 
So when this uh, joint planning will be well regulated, this will force countries to make this assessment and uh, to take the right decisions and to request assistance from other the, though the countries in order to discuss the challenges and overcome them. So it is in fact a win-win for all the countries of the ECOWAS. For the, when it comes to the capacity of the countries, so the countries, um, we have an early alert uh, system. This early alert system is an Excel sheet, which is filled out by the users. But we have to keep in mind that uh, this, uh, the fill out of this Excel sheet is problematic because the requested capacity that we need right now is to see how we can uh, computerize this early, uh, early, uh, early uh, alert system. Because it is an Excel sheet, but we want it to be into a system or a database. Uh, because we want that as soon as the officials fill this every day, so the system is going to compile the data and we will be able to have the level of storage. And this can be done systematically and automatically. I think that if we do that, we can have the consumption quantities that are, uh, that are accurate and this will feed the real database. This will also uh, will be uh, a compass for the upcoming services. So we have also to speak about consumption data. The consumption data are not very good. For me, the capacity that needs to be reinforced is to improve the system in order to have a more viable and more accurate data in order to facilitate the review and to facilitate the order. So that's what I can say. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ogosu. Just a note here that um, I've, I've uh, two more two more questions for our panelists, and then uh, we'll we'll cover those in about five uh, five minutes, and then we'll move into questions from uh, from the audience. Um, Alex, I, it looks like the connection is better. Um, thank you to Dr. Ogosu for talking uh, about capacity and about the van specifically, and I think we've seen. Uh, how powerful the van is and how it can bring global, regional, and national actors together uh, with a single source of quality information uh, in a country. Um, but but uh, what to you is the importance of uh, bringing with this visibility that the van provides, bringing uh, ECOWAS countries together for uh, joint supply planning? So, so the point I'm talking? Um, I, I, this, the, that question was for, uh, Alex. I'm not sure if Alex, it looks like Alex's connection. Ah, that's all, that's all. Because you went for, for Alex, we, um, okay. Alex, yeah. Can, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry about the, the connection, the network issue. So, um, the importance of bringing ECOWAS countries together for joint supply plan is enormous. Um, it's very significant for several reasons, particularly in the course of uh, globalized economies, independent supply chain, um, and shared resources. It has so many importance. Number one, cost reduction collaborate sorry about it. collaborative planning can lead to economic of scale we are both purchasing shared logistics and consolidated st storage can sig significantly reduce costs that is when yes um joint supply plan is in place. It will help countries to negotiate better terms with manufacturers 
and distribute the saving costs even to participating nations. Because when you come together to this, you can you will be able to discuss um, when you are procuring bulk purchase, you'll be able to discuss with the manufacturer and the price will come down. And that is you can't do it. And uh, you can't do it without coming together as a nation, as 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 a, 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 a region, coming together, looking into your supply plan, and be able to now say, okay, so so this country is procuring this, this country is procuring this, this country is procuring that. Now, how do we come together to meet manufacturer? If with that, the price can come down. And is a way of reducing cost. And uh, another one, it en it enhances resource utilization too by allowing countries to better utilize their resources by identifying and sharing excess commodities. Now, when you have overstock, you'll be able to share it with other countries. It reduces also waste and optimizing procurement. Then another one is that it can technological and knowledge sharing. With this, you'll be able to, like using um, van, we know how van is very efficient in our own in log uh, in our supply chain management. Using van, when you come together, you'll be able to know the innovations that could be added by saying, okay, so so and so thing could be peculiar to uh, uh, this country. Like when we had meeting at the um, early warning this year, we were also, we suggested that even the pricing could be done by countries, could be um, domesticated in terms of not having dollars, you, you may have dollar, but you can also be in your own home currency. It's a kind of improving our own technology to be able to move forward. And not only that, it could be in any other form that can be introduced in the in the van. And that will come through coming together, bringing knowledge, um, sharing knowledge together. And then again, it can also strengthen the international relations <clears throat> because collaborating in supply chain can enhance diplomatic relations. It could, it won't be only, it can be only, it may not be only uh, talking about commodity. It could be another way because the two countries are the, the ECOWAS countries are coming together. This uh, supply chain, joint supply chain, could be an a live way. Into bringing other countries, into bringing countries together to foster broader alliance and participate uh, partnership in various domains. Um, I think Thank you, you can also. So, Alex, I, I'm I'm going to just uh, we'll have some additional questions for each of the the panelists from the from the audience, but I'm uh, I'm going to move to our last questions uh, and then we'll. Uh, open it uh, open it up. Um, I have a last question for Dr. Curtis. Uh, a last question before we open it up uh, for the audience. You, uh, what are the possibilities offered by the uh, this project at the national level? What is your vision uh, regarding this uh, joint planning? What are the challenges uh, to uh, consider in this regard? especially in the region. Thank you, thank you for the question. I feel obligated to really talk about this question and I'm very thankful for everyone's contribution. All what we are discussing today will lead us to have a common plan. Uh, I am talking about a vision, I'm talking you said that we had to separate things. We had to uh, to to review our plans together in order to learn from one another. But the next stage, 
really allows us to look at the, at a common vision. We we need to see how we can have a plan, a common plan for all the region. We are not here to discuss only about that. We are talking about the vision as well, and we have to project ourselves into future and into the space. This leads space. This leads me to think that we have to reflect and see how we can enforce a regional plan in order to bring an added value. This is what we're doing. But also look at the overall uh, uh, thing. We need to see how we can work together to implement the plan and gain in terms of efficiency and economy, scale, etc. Because we're purchasing together, we will save in terms of cost as well if we work together. The initiative is is being enforced and is is being processed. The chief of state has urged us to work together in order to have a purchase uh, medicine uh, plan. We are working together with a team in order to look in terms of contraception plans and look at the products, what will be tested, what will not be tested. Yes. There are challenges, of course, when we talk about challenges. We have what we call the state sovereignty. Every state has its power. Every state has its own mechanisms. Hence, states will need to, to sacrifice something, uh, give the possibility to other countries to exchange confidential information among one another. and the suppliers, whether it is question of a common review or approved plan by region, at the end of the day, we really have to have data and we have to work together, the 12 countries to uh, work on uh, data, work with the suppliers, with the manufacturers, and with everyone, this is a fundamental step that we have to transcend. When we talk about group purchase, we have to work together in order, in terms of resources, uh, financial resources, because Toko, for example, Liberia, Benin, have to uh, contribute, have to work together. We need to work in, in the best interests of these countries in order to be able to purchase, in order to be able to be liable. We need to have a vision. We need to work on that vision and work uh, together to have a, a unique plan in the subregion and have uh, a grouped mechanism and uh, uh, capitalize on efficiency and cost as well. Thank you for the opportunity that was given to me. Merci, merci, Dr. Clitus. Um, I'm going to switch uh, to English, and then I've seen um, several questions come in, um, which we'll start off with. And I just want to encourage participants to, uh, if you if you've had questions, um, uh, please type them into into the chat or to the Q and A uh, function. I also uh, note that some some of these questions have been at least partially um, answered, um, but I, I think there's there's maybe more to say. So I'll, I'm just going to start off with the first question that I saw. Uh, come in. Um, it is uh, from uh, from from the chat. It is with country governments asking for less vertical and more horizontal intervention uh, implementation. Uh, what is the rationale to omit, uh, for example, maternal uh, menstrual health uh, commodities from this assessment? Uh, for for this, I would um, ask uh, Julia White from RHSC if if you have any any comments since you were. Uh, very involved in the design of this uh, uh, study of, of potential, uh, and then maybe Clitus uh, will will want to uh, complete um, after, and then uh, we'll move into the second set of questions. Thanks so much, Josh, and and thank you for the important question um, from the participants. So. Um, this is a really important point as we're looking at um, integration um, and, and possibilities with, with different therapeutic areas. And we've been thinking about this a lot at the coalition and thinking about the, the movement and, and different reproductive health products. So 
one of the realities is that the different therapeutic areas have different market realities and thus different supply planning processes. And so it's really important to understand the reality of each to see how it could lead to improved decision-making in the market. It's not gonna be the same for menstrual health as it's going to be for maternal health as it's going to be for contraceptives. It will be different. And as uh, Dr. Ada Hinzen was talking about, given the movement in West Africa with WAHO, um, with the van and under the early warning system that's really focused on contraceptive and family planning, it's a really good proof of concept to experiment and show the possibility of what this would look like across a group of countries. And then we can take that experience and see um, if it would be similar or different in different markets, uh, really taking into account how those markets work and how the countries create supply plans for those different markets. So I think that's part of the stepped approach um, that, that is necessary as overall, there's sort of this question of how could we get to pooled procurement across all medicines? How could we um, you know, look at supply plans in an integrated manner? So this would give uh, some insight to that um, specific to the contraceptive market to then see if, if that would be um, applicable to other markets. Thanks, Josh. Yeah, thanks, thanks Julia. Could you say the idea? Is as you uh, unfair? Could you provide us with any updates? I think the answer has been provided uh, with uh, Miss Julia. I do not have anything to add to what has been said by Julia. She is. Uh... Yeah. Thank you. So I'm going to move to the next uh, questions. There are two uh, from John uh, Durgovich, um, some of which have been. Uh, answered uh, partially, but I, I think I'll, I'll just read both of them here um, and then pass off to Cletus and the other panelists for answers. Um, the, the first question is, uh, so would, would, would joint supply planning, uh, if effective, lead to pooled procurement uh, to achieve some of these economies of scale? And would national program programs put funds into an agency, uh, whether a private agency or an international agency like UNFPA, to achieve those economies? Uh, and the second question uh, is, uh, what are some of the improvements that the country level procurement agencies made to their calls for tender? Uh, are there specific measurable objectives, for example, for the supplier response, like price reductions or full and on-time delivery or anything else other? Uh, or other measurable improvements at the at the country level. Um, so I think keeping in mind that this this was a uh, review of the potential for joint supply planning, uh, I know that these are questions that the all stakeholders uh, when we went through this process and evaluation of the process were thinking through. Um, so I also know that these are uh, we heard uh, elements of of a response or of responses to to both of these questions during the. The panel, but I, I'll start here uh, with Clay Juice, uh, and then uh, I'll ask uh, uh, Dr. Obasu and, and and Alex to weigh to weigh in uh, as well. I have to confess that you were you you were, you were so you were so speed, and I did not get you right because you were speak English. You were speaking English, so can you just summarize the question for us? I'm trying to get some of the question from the chat, but I'm not getting them. So we want you to be more to talk more slowly so that we can catch the question and and and, and be able to provide response to them. And I'm sure that that's also pro, uh, that's also is applicable to Dr. Agassi because we are French speakers. <laughs> Yes, let's yes, let us oh you can summarize the question for us so that we can respond to them. Uh because what you, you just said I did not catch it. Okay. Um change uh for the the francophone la première question. So would joint supply planning if effectively lead to poor procurement does economic time? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's what I said. Okay, and then what about the private UNFP? Okay, okay, okay. Just, I, I got the first one. Okay. <laughs> yes. Go. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Yes. Let, let me let me try uh, say this in in English. Maybe. Yes. The response is yes. It's yes because as I said, we are now talking about a joint review of the supply plan, but the next step for me at the regional level is making sure that we have a unique supply plan. 
and having a unique supply, supply plan only oh, is is just the end of it is to have a to have a joint uh, uh, procurement for our member state because when doing this we we're gonna we're gonna gain in in terms of uh, time energy and also money so I think this is this is what we have like a vision in the long term and I also mentioned that yeah, uh, yeah, we have a former instruction from a uh, head of the state, all of them uh, uh, learning from the COVID pandemic that we need to set up a mechanism for the poor procurement. And, uh, and uh, the system is already ongoing. We are trying to, 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 to make sure that uh, uh, commodities are part of, uh, are part of this mechanism. It will be a pilot, but we also want to make sure that uh, commodities are part of this and so that we can try and see or comparatively, poor procurement uh, uh, or an, 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 uh, individual procurement, what are we gaining? So we, we are, as WAHO, working on, the, on, on, on this one. And you're talking about the international agency in the UNFP. I think they'll, they'll be the best. So we, we have been working with those uh, institutions uh, for years. And they know that our mandate as, as ECOWAS is, is coming from the head of the state. And if we decide to do so, I think all of, the, uh, all of them will be happy to join us. Because, in fact, they are even asking for that. Asking for that. Uh, we have a lot of uh, 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 requests from USAID, from UNFPA, saying that why, why not go for a, a, joint, a, a joint supply planning and a, even a, a pool procurement. So I think, yeah. This part of uh, what our vision, this part of what we are trying to set up uh, in uh, at, at WAHO level. Thank you so much, and I hope I respond to that question. <laughs> and back to you, Jos. Yes, you, I think you responded both in some of your earlier answers and then just uh, just now. I will ask the question in French. What are the improvements that needs to be done by the agencies at regional level needs to make in the call to tender? Do you have any miserable, any, uh, any measures set in place in order to improve the price, in order to reduce the period? And what are the improvements that can be measured at national level? Um, so I will see if Dr. Ogosu uh, or if if no. Alex from from Nigeria would like to, um, uh, no. I, I also, also, also oh, like yeah, please, to, to please, respond yeah. to it. I yes. also start to say because this is this is this we are talking about the we are talking about the equipment of Kameg uh, or Kameg in Togo, for instance. We're talking about uh, from 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 Niger. Those who are in charge of procurement, is it isn't it? Yes. Okay, if that's the case, what I can tell you uh, from Waho perspective, we are trying to build capacity for those procurement agencies. That's the reason why we are not buying and drop the commodities for them. We lessen them by themselves and we pay the supply from our end. That's the first step. When you want and you think you want to build capacity of someone, you let you give him the leadership to do it and to see how easy it is, how complex it is, how complicated it is. That's what we have been doing for almost 15 years. That's the first thing. So giving them the opportunity to try to develop their tender document themselves, to evaluate tender themselves, to publish, in fact, publish first, to evaluate the tender, to sign the contract with the normal suppliers. It's not easy at all, and that's what we have been doing for them for years. At the beginning, it was not easy, but now we are trying, and some of them are doing very, very, very well. When we start this job, none of our member states can buy com commodities, I mean family planning commodities, for, the, for themselves. I can tell you for sure. My first mission was in 2010. I was in Ghana. Ghana have not bought any commodities at that time. We are talking about 2010. But now they are buying. Because we are giving them opportunity using our money to buy. And by doing that, they are learning. The tender document that I saw in Ghana in 2010 is not what I'm seeing today. No, at all. So, yeah, there are improvements. We did not have any measurable objective for them because we also have a limit as a, as a regional body. We cannot go and interfere in what is happening in, in, in every single uh, country. But at least we have evidence, as I'm telling you, that 
from 2010 to today, there are a huge improvement in terms of buying. And when we are talking about uh, we are talking about in, by buying is obviously we are talking about tender document because the process start from developing the tender document. So my response is yes, we're working with them to improve the development of tender documents, reducing a price. Yes, we are also doing that. Let me tell you something. Why are we talking about pre procurement? It does not mean absolutely that all, all the country will put their money together. It can also mean that we can help them to identify one supplier that supply everybody. So that you go and get your own from, from the from the from from the supplier in the same and acceptable price. So we are not saying that, uh, we are not saying that okay, we need everybody to put their money together and then we will buy for them or one country will buy for them. We can also say that okay, you know what? We're going to identify one supplier and then negotiate the price. Who and you will be your own will be shipped to you when needed. My own will be shipped to me when needed. That that's also is called poor poor procurement in French for sure. So I think yes, we are trying to do whatever we can do and also making sure that we have a qualitative product for our member states. We cannot be talking about money and then the quality will be behind. No, we're putting them at the same level that you buy cheap, but you buy high quality. I mean, WHO pre-qualified commodities. That's what we have been doing. So I can give the floor back to my colleague if they have any uh, other thing to, to say about that. Thank you so much. Yes, thank thank you, Kwejis, for that perspective from the from the regional level. Um, but yeah, I want to see if Dr. Ogosu or um, and Alex have um, anything to add about specific uh, and concrete uh, improvements in in perspective. Go. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? We hear you very well. So I was saying that uh, I would like to join what uh, Dr. Kles said. If we take the example of Togo, which is a small country, and the estimated country estimated need is uh, very low and doesn't exceed um, exceed. But what we do is when we work all together, uh, we use this through mechanism that uh, Cletus has uh, described. This allows us, as a small country, to have uh, to order and uh, to order as part of the other countries and to have the same price. Of course, the there is a pre-negotiation that is being made and these help us very much. And uh, even if we order small quantities, we have the same price as the other countries who order much more countries. Thank you, Dr. Owusu. Uh, I, I want to um, ask Alex if, you, if you'd like to add uh, anything from the country perspective in uh, Nigeria. So can, can, can you help me repeat that question so that I know where I will come in? Yes, um, I will. Uh, so the question is, um, what are some of the improvements that uh, country level procurement agencies made uh, to their calls for tender? Uh, are there specific measurable objectives, uh, for example, uh, for the supplier response, uh, like price reductions uh, or full and on-time delivery, uh, others uh, or other measurable improvements at the country level? Uh, would there be any or some kind of commodity security objective for joint supply planning? Over. Okay. Um, for Nigeria, the mechanism of procurement in, in countries is uh, we have, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. The, the mechanism of procurement in country, we have um, um basket fund system, which I believe John Dugavich that asked the question once he was once in Nigeria, he knows about the basket fund system in Nigeria. And uh, he has been in existence for about how many years now? Since uh, 2000 and 2011 till now. And we've been using it 
only that the issue of uh, money coming up because of the global, I would say global uh, economic meltdown. Um, we've not been steady in the area of procurement, but in terms of uh, uh, joint supply plan, of course, you know, it's just a new, a new um, mechanism that is coming on board. And we believe that it will also go well with us when it's in place. So um, I wouldn't say much on what is, how it's going to happen, but we want to see it happen. I will be in support in Nigeria, in support of that joint supply plan. And I know we are going to benefit a lot from that. Thank you, Andova. Okay, I uh, thank you, Alex. Um, we are nearly at uh, time. I'm just going to see um, if anyone has any other questions. Um, please put those in the chats. Um, I, I can I say something? I wanted to see if anyone had had any last uh, last comments. So please, uh, please. I would like to thank our community because we never thank each other too much because we live very far and we need to be honest when we see our region the 15 years ago and when i started to work to to, to where we were and where we are uh, i think the gap is very important so we need to hail each other and uh, to see what we crossed and what we were able to do this all time that is a short period of time if you take the van look what we are currently we were able even if all the countries did it but we have the majority of our countries which are able to have a plan they have a supply plan 15 years no one thought about that but now we think about that some countries do it systematically and they improve their performance other countries did not but we are pushing them toward doing it so we need to hail each other based on the efforts we do in order to improve the visibility of the supply chain it is a paramount aspect and i would like our community would like to thank our community due to the flexibility thanks to the generosity that is highlighted by each and everyone either when it comes to the health uh, the woman uh, women and child uh, health the coalition ecos ftos all who contributed for us to uh, uh, to uh, we need to stand up in order to ensure that the product go to the last mile and it is paramount and i do would like to underscore that once again i would like to thank an, each and everyone for all the support to wahoo and you can rely on us because we need to keep this journey ongoing that's what i can say when it comes to the closing and to say this study that we did, we didn't do it. We will try to see how we can um, uh, leverage it for the welfare of the people of this ECOWAS. Thank you. And I, I do think uh, we're at time, but I would just uh, like to thank uh, all, uh, all of the panelists uh, who participated, as well as Angela uh, for the presentation, as well as all of our co-hosts uh, at uh, the coalition. Um, I think, you know, the the idea of the this work was to uh, explore the potential um, uh, for joint uh, supply planning. I think it's clear, uh, first of all, that there is uh, a, a lot of interest, capacity, and potential uh, for future, for future joint supply planning. Uh, I also think it is uh, it is because of the uh, extensive work that uh, stakeholders on this uh, panel and call have done uh, with the with the van um, and on supply planning supports uh, from Waho generally. So I, I think this is a great example of how joint supply planning can build on the momentum and tools that already uh, exist. So I think. To be respectful of everyone's time, I think we'll leave it there. Um, but thank you to everyone who was able to make time, uh, and thank you to everybody who uh, participated and uh, presented this uh, this morning.